With the arrival of the holy month of Ramadan and the following an old procedure, the central office of the Grand Jury Ayatollah Shirazi holds series of scholarly sessions welcoming the big number of scholars, seminary masters and students and enthusiasts. These sessions are held each night at 12 to 1 a.m. In these sessions, the Grand Jury Ayatollah Shirazi explains the questions by the attendees. In this part of our program, we offer you a brief analysis of the second four rounds of these scholarly sessions. Following an old procedure, the office of the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi has held a series of scholarly sessions during the holy month of Ramadan, which are hosted by the Grand Jurist himself. In these sessions, prominent religious scholars and seminary masters and students ask their questions directly from the Grand Jurist and listen to the explanations offered by Ayatollah Shirazi. These sessions are held each night at 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. In the fifth round of these scholarly sessions, one of the many questions responded by the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi was regarding a novel issue among the people. The discussion about this issue is as follows. Is one allowed to undergo cosmetic surgery on his face given that after the surgery water must not come in contact with the face and this will prevent him from performing wudu on his face as he will have to do wudu al jabira instead of by wiping on the gauze or pot that covers the part of his face on which surgery was performed? In responding to this question, Ayatollah Shirazi said that it is jurisprudentially possible to state that one is allowed to do so. Even though he does not issue a verdict or fatwa allowing his followers to do so, unless they have a compelling reason to do so, such that if they don't, they will fall in excessive hardship. Sixth night of these scholarly sessions consisted of questions concerning Islamic transactions, struggling with obsessions in performing Islamic rituals, and some other basic topics. In response to a question by one of the attendees, the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi touched upon some points on the subject of the form of interest in Islamic transactions. If one makes a transaction, buying or selling, that comes to its interest, but at the time of receiving the product, it no longer constitutes interest, is that permissible? For example, let's assume one makes a business contract to sell the kilograms of good quality rice in return for 5 kilograms of bad quality rice. This constitutes interest in Islamic law. However, when one goes later to take the rice, the good quality rice becomes bad quality and they both become the same. Or consider one who sells eggs. Let's assume that in the winter the eggs are sold based on their weight, but in the summer they are sold based on the number of eggs that one buys. In Islamic law, interest arises from selling items which are based on their weight, not those which are sold based on the number of pieces that one buys. If in the winter one makes the transaction, but in the summer goes pick to them up, will that make it legitimate since in the summer they are sold based on their number, not their weight? It appears that the correct ruling is that the time of transaction determines whether there will be interest or not, not the time of receiving the product. In addition, the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi answered a question using the law of continuity, or istishab. This question is as follows. Performing wudu while having already done so is recommended, and the narration states that it is light upon light. But if one does ghusl al janaba one should not perform wudu after it. Now, if after showering one thinks he fell asleep for a second, but is not sure, can he do wudu because there is a chance that the purity he achieved by showering became nullified by falling asleep? The law of continuity, istishab, establishes that he is still pure from showering because he dots whether he fall asleep or not. And the law states, do not negate certainty with dot. Can he still make wudu? Apparently not. In response to a question by one of the scholars in the seventh nightly session, the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi spoke about the generality of an Islamic ruling. The scholar raised this question, do all general rulings embrace the atypical cases or not? 
Ayatollah Shirazi responded by saying that the jurisprudential principle is that the atypical cases are to be excluded unless there is proof that they should be included. And in the example mentioned, honoring the human being, there is common proof that all types are to be honored, not just the typical ones. Hence, if we know that the atypical cases are included, then we apply the general ruling to them. And if we know that they are not included, then we do not apply it. However, if we do not know whether it applies to them or not, the jurisprudential principle states that it does not apply to atypical cases. In the 8th night, the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi answered some questions, one of which addressed points regarding a case of murder where the murderer goes through a surgery that changes his sex. If a man murders someone, then he changes his sex and becomes a woman. Is the death penalty administered to him since he was originally a man or no, since he become a woman and a woman is not killed? Ayatollah Shirazi responded, We must examine the narrations which addresses the death penalty to determine what exactly is the subject for one who is given the death penalty for murdering someone. Apparently, what determines whether a person is handed the death penalty or not is his sex at the time of committing the crime not the time of retribution. Hence, if a person was male when he committed the murder, then he deserved the death penalty even though he changed his sex later. Islam encourages its adherents to allot a portion of their income or a part of their property for the common good. This concept is coined as waqf in Islam. The next topic addressed by the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi was concerning waqf or endowment. This topic started by a question inquiring about the ways one can make endowment in the Islamic jurisprudence. There are three ways of offering an endowment. The first is offering an endowment while the goods, assets, or property continues to exist, such as offering a farm as an endowment, or offering a piece of land, or offering a car. There is nothing wrong with offering such an endowment because what is being offered is something physical or tangible. The second is to dedicate the value of goods as an endowment. For example, instead of offering the actual farmland as an endowment, one offers its value as an endowment. Hence, what was really donated was the value of the land, not the land itself. The third is to offer money or currency as an endowment to Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. For example, and the goal is to have this money invested and the yields which are generated be given to these causes or projects.